down came the bivel and washed the spider out. Hello, my name is Chris and welcome to the post-fight reaction for Dimitri Bivol's successful world title defence against Craig the Spider Richards. Yes, Bivol successfully defends his WBA super title against British challenger Spider Richards. Richards put in a good performance in this fight. I think Richards performed better than a lot of people thought he would. He is... A, a solid fighter, and when I say solid fighter, I really mean defensively. He's got a pretty good defense, he's got a pretty good chin. He, he was... He had a good jab in the fight. This is the thing that I, I kind of feel like he, his overall sort of um, stature in boxing has increased, even with that loss. Because he, Richards basically did the same thing the entire fight. Okay, a little bit of a markdown because of that. He jabbed. His his style was, I'm going to jab, bivol, and occasionally try and land a hook. And obviously that tactic didn't work. But I would say that he actually did have a good jab. And there were moments in the fight where when he let his hands go, he did land on bivol. The problem was he didn't do it enough. Now it's easy for me sitting here saying, oh, Richards, all he had to do was just land more punches. Yeah, all he has to do is land more punches against Dimitri Bivol, an undefeated world champion late heavyweight. You know, it's much easier to say something than it is to actually put it into action. I think Richards and his team will have known during that fight that yes, the tempo needs to increase, but it's easy to say that and it's a lot harder to actually do it because Bivol, I guess you could describe Bivol as a back foot fighter. But and then in the fight he wasn't he, he had he did have sort of more of the his um, weight on his sort of back foot, but he was kind of short to mid range for the whole fight. And I, I feel the the tail of the fight was really that Bivol landed more than Richards. Both of them had good jabs, but Bivol was managing to block at least half of Richard's jabs and occasionally land a big power punch or two. It wasn't that often, but it was enough to win the rounds. It was like a sort of um, methodical approach from Bivol. Bivol knew how much he had to do each round to comfortably win the round. And there were some rounds that were close. Anyways, Bivol done enough each round to win. And that's kind of his style, and I, it's something I mentioned in my 60 second prediction video where I said that Bivol's last four fights have all been unanimous points decisions. He does enough to win each round, but he, seem, he doesn't seem to want to go up to the next level to try and stop the fighter. And I, I guess that's just his style, you know, you, you can't, like not everyone can fight every way. You know, there's maybe a, a sort of habit that boxing fans, including myself, have when you're watching someone and you say, why don't they just do this? It's like, well, maybe they can't do that. Maybe they haven't trained for that. Maybe the other person is stopping them from doing that. But, I guess I'm rambling now, but Richard's put in a good performance, but he didn't do enough to win. I think that Richard's will have a good career. Like I think there's a lot of scope for him in the light heavyweight division. I saw Shane McGregor on, on social media say that he would actually love to see Craig Richards versus Joshua Boatze. And I agree. I was thinking that watching that, thinking, you know what, Richards is fighting well here. He's not going to win this, but I think he could really have put in a, a few good performances against other good names. And Richards Boatze is a fight both under matchroom, both light heavyweights, both from the UK. That seems like a good fight for Boatze after his TBA fight next weekend. No, no not next weekend, in two weeks' time. But where does Bivol go from here? Tricky, because Joe Smith Jr. is the WBO champ who has Lyndon Arthur as the mandatory challenger. Who So that fight will either happen soon or Joe Smith Jr. will fight Better Behave in a world title unification clash. And if Better Behave Smith is a good fight and a close fight, which I think it might be, then they might do that as a rematch. So you, 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 kind of, you need to start looking at contenders and non-world champions to see who Bivol can fight. Kovalev, is Kovalev done? You know, Bivol versus Kovalev. 
that'd be a good fight. I don't know how much Kovalev has left, though. Yeah, I think getting getting big fights for Bivol will be hard because the main names is really Joe Smith Jr. and Berter Biev and Kovalev. But will any of those three want to fight Bivol? There's promotional issues, network issues. I don't know. I do think that Bivol has the potential to be the number one in the division. Better BF is old. Better BF probably only has one or two years left. Bivol is 30, but you know he doesn't really take any damage in his fights, so you, you could assume that he could go for another four or five years himself, maybe even six years. Who knows? Who do you think Bivol should fight next? Let me know in the comments below, remember, at that little like button, and I'm out. Peace.